This is Road to the White House, C-SPAN's weekly look at the candidates and issues shaping 2000 presidential politics. Ahead, former Red Cross president and likely Republican presidential candidate Elizabeth Dole in New Hampshire and Republican presidential candidate Pat Buchanan in Georgia. We begin with Elizabeth Dole, traveled to Ella J, Georgia last month. He attended a fundraiser sponsored by Oscar Poole, owner of Poole's Barbecue Restaurant. <laughs> okay, good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, sir. I've been checking up on your web page. I like yep. that two pages of what they stand for and what you stand for this morning. Well, wonderful. Have you seen it? It, well, they got that up now. No, we were it. working I on it. They finally got it up. Excellent. I got a copy of my phone. Excellent, excellent. We're going to do more with that web page. We can now start start our little fundraiser. How you been doing? Good to see you. Where are you from now? Duluth, Georgia, huh? You know, you know my Shelly? Good to see you. Good to see you. How you doing? We miss you on, uh, as a voice of reason on Crossfire. Well, thank you. But we're glad to have you in the race. Well, thank you very much. My little daughter, Stephanie. How old Stephanie now? Six months. Six months? She's, How you doing, Stephanie? She, she's very excited about being here. Well, <laughs> I can see that. Excited about you being the next president. Well, excellent. How you doing, Stephanie? Can you give us a smile, Stephanie? How you doing, gal? Huh? Uh, I don't get Close to lunchtime. She's thinking about Colonel Poole's barbecue. Oh, okay, I bet she is. <laughs> Thank you. Real quick question. When you get inside, you'll mingle amongst the people. Sure will. Sure will. Have a speech, a speech out here. Okay, fine. Yeah. Just a minute. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. 92. Well, thank you very much. I'll tell you about my claim to fame. Right. My, grand, my eldest son went to a high school where the Confederate flag was the symbol of the football team. We spent $40,000 and took the lawsuit all the way to the Supreme Court where we lost. Mm -hmm. And you cannot have the, black, the stars and bars right. where blacks attend. Chattanooga, Tennessee. My goodness, well. And it lasted four years. That's my claim to fame. Well, so it's a lie when there's justice in this country. Stand over there with you. All right, my friend. Well, Can I get a quick picture? Right. All right, good enough. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. I used to live in California, Pat. I supported you then. I live now in Georgia. I'm still supporting you. Well, thank you and very I, much. And I hope you've seen Glenn Spencer's Take Voice of Citizens Together Immigration Threatening the Bonds of the Union. Well, I, I have yes. heard about that. I have not seen it yet. Yeah. I'll see it. Okay. A quick picture, Pat? Sure enough. Good right. to see you. All right, right here. No new world order. <laughs> Right. No new, no new world job. order. Okay. We appreciate everything. Good okay, luck, good to see you. Thanks for coming good out. Good to see you. How you doing? Good. I'm good? a transplanted Yankee coming down here. So transplanted. They don't know that down here, do they? I don't. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they are friendly folks down here, right over in Cal. You know, we carried both this area. And I think in 92 and 96, and right across over there, South Carolina. I want to give you a videotape of you speaking me up. Right, good to see you. At Cobb County? Yeah. I made a videotape of when you were on Town Square, and I gave it to you. Well, exactly. I remember that very well. Sure. Okay. Bill Fry. Good to see you. Pleasure. Good to see you. Good to see you. How you doing? South Carolina boy, Dime Park. Good to see you. Thanks for coming down. Good to see you. Buchanan came over from Hall County, Flowery Branch, which you took in 96, too, my friend. Well, thanks very much. We did very well over here yes. in this whole area. Yes, you did. A lot of good, good friends here. Thanks, thanks very much. Point, sure enough. You got a pen? Yes, sir. Well, I look a little younger there, don't I? <laughs> yeah, you're a little bit. <laughs> We're all getting older. All right. How do I, how do I want to make it out to you there now? Frank. All right. All right. Okay. June 12th, 99. Let's get some free advertising from C-SPAN there, all right? <laughs> Send that out to the world. They're still selling them. That's my girlfriend, Kim, taking her picture. Hi, Kim. How you doing? Good to see you. Thank Good you, sir. Good thank luck. you. Thank you. Uh, hi. Good to see you, Jennifer. Pleasure to meet you. Right. Good to see you. Hey, concerned about our country. I think you're the man for us. And I'm, well, thank I'm you very much. This, this type of leadership we've had, the lack of leadership. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's a real disappointment what they're doing up in Spend a lot of time getting them in there, and they're not doing a very good job for us up in yeah, the Congress. Uh, not, not really. Nope. I'm, I'm not happy with any of them. Well, a lot of folks aren't happy. We'll that, get some. Looking for a change in the White House, so. Well, we, we got that in mind. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Now. Good to see you. Good to see, see you. you.
Thank you, sir. Pat, you can. Next play, you know, you know the bear. Good to see you. You know the bear. Hey, how you doing, bear? Good to see you. How are you? You look great. Yeah, you do too. You having a golf course this morning? Yeah, I played nine before I got over. This is Dr. Cox, George Cox. George, how are you? Last time I saw you was in Selma. Selma, Alabama? Yeah, for the Becker campaign. You remember Dan Becker? Yep, yep, I do, sure. We went down in there for him, right, yeah. yeah we got one of your pictures. We got all the pictures made of that. Before yeah, before. yeah, we've been all through here in three campaigns. How you doing? You're looking good. Nancy's sick as a dog. Yeah. And she's not with me. Well, it's good I of you to come up. I wanted him to come over. I remember you drove safe. us up to Dawson. Yeah. Went at that time for that well, breakfast that yeah, morning. Yeah, and then LJ here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure. Well, good to, good see, to see you. Me. You're looking good. Thank you. We right. Okay. Appreciate it. I'm from Mineral Bluff, Maury Courtney, another Irishman. Well, good to see and you. And I love your views and what you stand for, and my family will vote for you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I wish you the best. Thank you. She won't pat. She wants to get your signature on the yes, book. Yes, ma'am. Sure enough. Fine. You got a pen? Okay. You want to get something? Come back. Sit right here. Yeah, but this is anything. I think. All right. What's your name again, ma'am? Evelyn Smith. Evelyn Smith. All right, Evelyn. I know he would have signed the original. Thanks for coming out, Evelyn. Yeah. We appreciate it very much. I appreciate you writing. Her, her, son, okay. her son is a great yeah, Republican state representative. He's my representative. Waxman. Good to see you. Good to see you. Right. Yes, sir. George Bustard, right? Gene. Gene, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I tell you, we think we... Uh, Okay. Yeah, I think maybe we talk to the folks. Okay, y'all. Pat's gonna make the speech uh, over here. Should we get talk to the folks inside first? What do you think, Oscar? What's that? Should we talk to the folks inside? I've, I've come, come, come out here. Okay. We good enough. To come out here. I told him you'd mix and mingle with them after we go in. I'm sorry. Okay. Y'all move right around. Pat's gonna speak okay. right over here. Okay. Pat, if you don't sign that, they won't let me home tonight. <laughs> hey. How do you want me to make it out now? Just make it out to... Uh, Let's do that right now. Ladies and gentlemen, right now it's a pleasure to give you the honor of this great restaurant, Colonel Poole, who started this barbecue restaurant 10 years ago. Pat Buchanan came here in 92 and really put him on the map. Now he's known around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big hand to Colonel Oscar Poole. Thank you very much. And I'm welcoming Pat and Shelly, my dear friends. <laughs> They have been a part of this thing now for seven and a half years. And uh, you know, Pat, we're celebrating, we are celebrating 10 years. Right. Full, can you believe that shack next door had a full, a full page ad in the paper? I sure do, Oscar. I remember it very well. It was a lovely place. You shouldn't call it a shack. It was a great place. It was a great place. I remember it. There you are right there. Love, uh, Pat McCannon, your third time here with us. Third visit, exactly. Sure enough, Saturday, June 12th. It was eight years ago. That's right, Pat. That's and old right. Joe took me over there to Ella J High. That's right. That's and then we right. swept Ella J. That's right. We beat, we beat George Bush and Ella J. We cleaned his That's clock right. over there. Yeah. We're going to beat him again, too. Now, That's one right. more thing here. Uh, Pat, we have a uh, picture of this new place. <laughs> this is a Taj Mahog. This is the Taj Mahog. <laughs> All right, the Taj Mahog, Colonel Poole. <laughs> and this is for Shelly, one All of right. our regular shirts here, the pigs on the hill. Thank you very, very much. much. <laughs> this is, we're going to frame them. All right, we'll frame Inca Wham, we're going to frame them. The Taj Mahog. <laughs> I want to say this, uh, what an honor it is to have Pat and Shelly back here. I told Shelly this. Standing in front of a courthouse in New Hampshire. You recall the day, Shelly, I said, Pat's a prophet? And you said, What's that? <laughs> and I said, I'll be through in a minute. I said, By the turn of the century, they'll all be on his side. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, it, it is now a great pleasure to present to you the next president of the United States, the greatest friend in American history of the taxpayers of America, the Honorable Patrick Joseph Buchanan! The folks up here have always been very gracious to me and to Shelley and very good to us, and very warm, and, uh, and it is really, uh, I feel very moved being back here and speaking to you folks again. So thank you very much, Pierre, for coming out. And let me tell you about the ideas we talked about in those years and the ideas that we're going to carry 
Not through it, we're going to carry Ella J. We're going to carry North Georgia. We're going to carry Georgia. We're going to carry the South. We're going to carry the nomination. Then we're going to carry the White House. Yeah. This time out. And when we do, I'm not going to charge 50000 to you folks to come up and stay in the bedroom. We're going to cut the rates for you folks a little bit. Rates <laughs> in bedroom. <laughs> Cutting the rates up there for you. Well, listen, let me talk about the causes and the things we fought for and believed in. Now, Joe just mentioned one of them. Now, we know America is an overtaxed and it's overregulated and it's overgoverned society. And we all worked. I worked for 33 years ever since I was a, a kid working for Richard Nixon to give us a Republican Congress. And I got to say, in some senses, and this is a good day, we're enjoying ourselves, but there's been some disappointment on the part of that Congress. Yes. I mean, they haven't cut a single regulation I can think of. They haven't slashed a single tax I can think of. And they haven't gotten rid of one, one federal agency I can think of in the five years they've been up there. Fire them. Fire them. <laughs> Impeach them and jail them. All right, now we're moving a little into extremism over here, my friend. <laughs> but the truth is they haven't shut down a single agency, not even that mitt dismal National Endowment for the Arts. And I said, look, let me say again, we'll shut it down, we'll fumigate the building. Give it to Alec Baldwin. But let me talk about some of the serious issues. We've got to cut the tax burden on the American people. That's cutting capital gains taxes and cutting income taxes. Another one we're going to get rid of is death taxes especially on small businesses. Let me tell you a little story. You know, I went to uh, my accountant. I used to be an accountant when I was a kid. I worked for, worked for an accounting firm, and I was hired instantly, and I was given a great job, and it only had a little bit to do with the fact that my old man ran the accounting firm. <laughs> but I learned how to do tax returns, and I learned how to do tax returns of foundations and wealthy folks, and I traveled and did audits in West Virginia and Boston, and I can't even make out my tax return right now. I got to send it to an accountant, and that's ridiculous. And Shelley and I went over to another accountant, and he said, you're the only person I know that doesn't have a trust to take care of what he's earned so the government doesn't take it. And I found out that in my retirement plan, when we start paying out, Shelley and I, when we retire after eight years in the White House, <laughs> that <laughs> when we retire, the federal government will take 40% of it. And if I happen, we happen to pass away, federal government will come in and take 55% of it. Now that's ridiculous. Now people like Oscar work all of their lives, set up a wonderful small business like that, and subject to 55% taxes when they want to pass it on to their friends or their children or their grandchildren. So we're going to get rid of inheritance taxes on all small businesses in the United States of America and all family farms. And I tell you, years ago I warned folks that we were feeding the tiger and giving all this aid to communist China, all these trade surpluses. And how much have we given? $275 billion in trade surplus in the last seven or eight years to communist China. What are they doing with that money? Now we know. They've stolen all our nuclear weapons technology. They're building nuclear missiles and targeting them on the United States. They're targeting them on our friends on Taiwan. They're persecuting Christians. They're persecuting Christians and dissidents and Tibetans constantly. And then they trashed our embassy. And so Bill Clinton apologized five times for the accidental bombing of their embassy when they deliberately trashed our embassy. Let me tell you, if I'm President of the United States, and I believe we're going to get there, I would call in Mr. Zhu Ranji the communist leader and their big economic advisor, I'd call him into the Oval Office and tell him, look, if you start building down those missiles, you start tearing down those missiles pointed at our country, you stop persecuting Christians, or you will have sold your last stuffed panda bear in any mall in the United States of America. Now let me talk about this war. Now let me talk about this foreign policy war, this war in Kosovo. Now many of you know, I felt initially we ought to use diplomacy and try to stop a low-grade civil war in, between the Serbs and the Kosovar Albanians. That we ought not to launch a war because we had no vital interest, I felt, in Kosovo. And so that war was launched 
Now Serbia has been smashed and ruined. And now the Kosovar Albanians have gone through a human rights hell and a catastrophe. Instead of being stabilized, the Balkans are destabilized. Now we've got the Russians moving into Kosovo, and NATO's moving into Kosovo, American troops into Kosovo, and we're all occupying Kosovo. All right? I didn't think it was the right war. I didn't think it was America's war. But that war's over now. We thank the Lord it's over, and we didn't lose any of those fine American pilots over there. And we pray we don't lose any of those Marines in there. But I tell you, when I get there, I, we got to tell the Europeans, just as Eisenhower said we should tell them. We've been defending you folks for 50 years. We paid all the prices. Our troops were the ones in Europe. Our troops were the ones that fought in Korea. Our troops were the ones that fought and died in Vietnam. And we defended you, and we paid the cost of that. And now you got more money than we do, and you got more troops than we do, and you got more people than do, we do. So it is time for Europe begin to begin to take full responsibility for their own defense and to pay the cost of their own defense. You know, these, well, these are areas where I disagree not only with Clinton and Gore, but I disagree with Mr. Bush and Mr. Forbes and Mrs. Dole and even John McCain, my friend John McCain. I think we need to restore America's lost sovereignty. I think we need to... Yes. Well, let me ask you. Let me tell you a story. You know, out in Orange County, California, that's a Republican county, they made a mistake. They elected a liberal Democrat as their treasurer. And a liberal Democrat invested all the county funds, and he lost a billion dollars. And so they were bust. You know what the federal government, Clinton, said, well, it's a conservative county, you take care of yourselves. You raise taxes. You know, you got to be responsible. You got to be accountable. So what happened? His friend, General Suharto in Indonesia, he said, look, I'm plumb broke. I can't pay $41 billion back to your New York banker friends, Mr. Clinton. So they got together a $41 billion bailout for Indonesia. And then they got $57 billion bailout for South Korea. And they got a $41 billion bailout for Brazil. Now, they can't bail out American counties, but they can bail out all these corrupt foreign governments. Well, let me tell you something. That's the whole idea for this global new world order, the socialist new world order, where the wealth of the United States and the power of the United States are used by global bureaucrats for what their design and their vision of a global government. But I'll tell you something. The new world order crowd, whether it's the Congress, the Council on Foreign Relations, or the Clinton administration, or the crowd over there in Europe, they got one principal adversary in the United States that scares them to death. And he's the fellow that's about to have some barbecue at Oscar's, Oscar's Barbecue. That's right. <laughs> they don't want to see this lady as first lady either. <laughs> But listen, I know it's a long uphill battle. I know all the pundits and pollsters. I think the Lord put them on this earth to have folks for us to laugh at, frankly. <laughs> but they all said, you know, they all said, Republicans, if they, if they nominate a moderate, you know, they're going to win. Well, we've done that twice. We got 37% of the vote and we got 43% of the vote. Now they say Republicans got to do the same thing again. But we're not going to. I tell you, well, last time we won three out of, three out of four of the early primaries and we were stopped in Arizona, unfortunately. But in 92, we came off a talk show and in 10 weeks, almost beat Mr. Bush, President of the United States, who had been at 91%. <laughs> Four years later, they said, you can't beat Mr. Dole because you started five and he started 55. And we beat Mr. Dole in New Hampshire. So we beat, we almost beat Bush. We did beat Dole. So now they tell me I got to beat Bush and Dole. <laughs> We're gonna, and we're gonna and we're gonna do that and then after we do that we're going to go after albert but that makes me nervous we got to go after albert gore and i got to go into a national debate with albert gore and i'm very concerned about that i mean how do you debate the fellow that invented the internet <laughs> How do you debate the fellow whose who's romance up there at Harvard, that school he went to with 
him and Tipper served as the it serves as inspiration for Love Toys, the movie. I mean, it's a wonderful romance, this four story. So I'll tell you. Tennessee. <laughs> they, got, they got some refugees over here from Tennessee, and they're from North Carolina. I even talked to a couple, some fellas here from New York, although he's hiding that fact. <laughs> he's right there. <laughs> but listen, I want to thank you all very, very much. And it is a very nostalgic visit for us coming over from, from South Carolina, a good three-hour drive through the mountains of North Georgia and the uh, hill country up here. It's one of the great hidden secrets of America, the beauty of this hill country. And I see a lot of friendly faces out there, the bears out there, and some of the folks that have helped us out in the campaign. And uh, I want to just say I thank you all very much, and, uh, and we're going to give it the fight of our lives. And I know my, the president I work for, a truly great American, you know, they said he was out of it. I remember a story of my friends, Jermon and Whitcover. I was out at the Iowa caucuses, and I, my heart was with Ronald Reagan. I was in journalism in 1980. And Ronald Reagan got whipped in the Iowa caucuses. And Jermon and Whitcover, Whit, Mr. Whitcover came up to me and said, Pat, you're supporting a, a retired 69-year-old B-grade B actor with prematurely orange hair, and he ain't going nowhere. That's what he said in 1980. And now they're putting the Gipper on Mount Rushmore, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and old Jermon and Whitcover are still working for the Baltimore Sun. <laughs> no, no, listen, we're gonna, what we're going to do is, is I just want to say thanks to these folks and thanks to the good folks at C-SPAN who have come out here and, and all the folks that have come over. I appreciate it. We're going to give you the fight of our lives. And Shelley and I truly believe the third time we're going to do it this time. And I'll tell you, in the middle of that debate, you won't see Pat Buchanan with Al Gore. You won't see me looking at my watch trying to figure out when dinner is because I'll be too busy peeling the hide, the ever-loving hide off Albert Gore. Thank you very much. After speaking to the crowd, Joe McCutcheon, a Georgia radio talk show host, interviewed Pat Buchanan. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an, is, an honor, it's my great honor to have as my guest the next president of the United States, the Honorable Patrick Joseph Buchanan. Pat, again, welcome to Gilmer County. Pat Buchanan, why should the American people vote for you to lead our great nation? Well, I believe they should vote for me because the ideas that I've thought of and fought for for the last seven or eight years, running for president this third time, I think that they've been demonstrated to be what is right for America. I think clearly we need a tax cut for the American people and for American small business especially. We need to stop giving up huge trade surpluses to a communist Chinese regime, which is threatening this country with nuclear missiles. I think we need a new trade policy that stops sending American jobs abroad and manufacturing abroad. Joe, if I could tell you one story. Yes, sir. I was up in Gastonia, North Carolina, just two days ago in the morning in a John Deere plant. Just laid off 700 American workers they got about 130 left. They're going to get rid of them, too, because they're moving the plant to Chihuahua, Mexico. And one of these fellas told me that his neighbor was now in Chihuahua, training the individual who's going to replace him, who will be making $1 an hour. Now, this is what's happening to these American workers. And when these mills are shut down in North Georgia and the Carolinas, people up there don't understand. It rips up communities. The tax base goes down school revenues go down and it is a real blow to communities and I think we got to start thinking about the Americans who have been left out of the Goldilocks economy and we got to bring those in as well. Okay. And that's why I want to be president of the United States. Very good Pat. Okay. okay. George W. Bush is now leading in the polls. How is Pat Buchanan going to defeat George Bush and win the Republican nomination? Well Mr. Bush is now they say up about 50 percent and that he'd be very tough to beat. You know Joe when we challenge Mr. George Bush's dad, he was up at 91 percent, and we almost beat him in New Hampshire. So 50 percent is an easy hurdle for me to overcome. So I think <laughs> Mr. Dole was at 55 percent, and we beat him in New Hampshire. So we like to start off here. We're like that horse Silky Sullivan, you know, in the last in the last furlongs. He was the one that really ran. <laughs> okay, Pat. There's a lot of waste in pork barrel spending in government, and I'm 
uh, this point in the Republican Congress, they haven't done more about it. How will you give the American people a better return on their investment in government, in other words, the taxes they're paying, when you're elected President of the United States? Well, I think we've got to take it any number of federal cabinet departments, which really should not exist. Let's take, well, first off, the little one, the National Endowment for the Arts. We can shut that down, and we get to take that empty building, we can, we can move the IRS into the small empty building. <laughs> After we, that's after, after we fumigate the building. <laughs> then we're going over to the Department of Education, frankly, and take all the primary and secondary education funds. You know, Department of Education spends only about 6 or 7% of the primary and secondary education money in this country. But hands down, 50% of the rules on local schools. So we take all that money in primary and secondary education and move it back to the states and the communities so that parents and teachers and principals decide what is taught and how in the public schools of every single community in America. And we take that money out of the federal government, and then we let the bureaucrats go and chase them across the Potomac River into Virginia. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, well, Pat, they, have, they have trouble getting across there running in those sandals, Joe. <laughs> That's great. Well, now, Pat, uh, how, what do you feel about the war in Kosovo? What are your feelings? The taxpayers paid to bomb that country, and now they're going to have to pay to rebuild it. What, what, do you, what do you feel about that? Are the taxpayers getting a good return on that? I don't think they are, Joe. As you know, look, our, our, our pilots did a tremendously professional job, as they were ordered to do, and especially the heroes in this war were those, those helicopter units that went in and picked up our two, our two guys inside Serbia themselves. But I don't believe this was America's war. I thought it was Europe's war from the beginning. I don't think we ought to have American ground troops fighting or occupying parts of the Balkan Peninsula. This is Europe's war, and I think it's time Europe took responsibility, full responsibility, for the cost of paying for its own defense and took care of the problems in their backyard, and we took care of the problems in our backyard. You know, maybe it's time to bring American troops home from Kosovo and Bosnia. Yeah from defending the borders of Yugoslavia and start defending the borders, the southern border of the United States Joe, this is one of the toughest interviews I've ever had. It is tough, isn't it? <laughs> you're, worse, you're worse than Tim Russert. What, what do you think about school violence? How can it be stopped, and are you for stronger gun control laws? Look, look, those, those two kids that turned into killers at Columbine High violated 18 laws against guns and explosives. Does anybody here think passing a 19th law would have stopped them no. from plotting for a full year? I don't think so. And I think this, I think Mr. Clinton and the others have used this incident to scapegoat sportsmen and hunters and folks who buy and own guns for the security of themselves and their families, which they got every right to do under the Second Amendment. And if you want to know what's wrong with that public schools, Mr. Clinton ought to go talk to his friends in Hollywood. I'll tell you, years ago, 30 years ago, the ACLU started winning victories, and they drove God and the Ten Commandments and Bible instruction and all moral instruction out of the public schools and into those schools as comes all the filth and romanticized raw violence that Hollywood can produce. So if Bill Clinton wants to lay the wood on somebody, he can leave the NRA alone and go out and lay the wood on his Hollywood friends who are giving him all that money. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, Pat. We're we'll the only, incidentally, Pat, we're the only ones that can still give him money because I talked to the Chinese. Their embassy's all tapped out, Joe. <laughs> they don't have any more. Well, you know where 60 roads and crosses 75? Yeah, I know where 75 is, yeah. Well, it crosses down there. They're just about a uh, half mile from there. Well, I, I want to thank you for coming out and, uh, and helping out, and I appreciate you very much for being here. Okay. All right, you take it easy, all right? Well, now how come you to know that what, what am I to do for all the rest of them? Well, you're here, and I, we appreciate it very, very much. Kiss me. The youngest reporter wants to shake your hand. How you doing? Good to see you. How you doing, fellow? On. What's your name? You got to turn around this way, fella. Yeah, uh, there's Buchanan 2000. That's good enough. All right. Sit. Give a few words to the national audience out there. 
<laughs> you mean, you mean my... <laughs> He doesn't look all that impressed to me. <laughs> all right, how you doing, huh? <laughs> there you go. Want to watch that? You don't want to get that? Know, that'll you. stab him. You might, right. My right. Thank Ramlin. you very much. Ryan Bramlett. Well, yeah. Oh, she is so excited. We are. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. Okay. Well, good to see you. Well. Great. And he used to watch it all the time. He gave me voice and the voice. Well, you tell your son to stay in there and don't give up. He's right here now. Right here? Right here. You don't give up and you stay in there fighting. Well, okay. When all everything was done. The Republican establishment claims you're a protectionist and you gladly accept the label, but your positions on free trade are more akin to free trade than actually know what they're saying. Sure. Ever think about going on the offensive and throwing that bomb in there? Exactly, exactly. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out and helping out. Well, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, my friend. All right. Me and my daughter here and her sons right. work for you like dogs. Right. Well, well, thank you. And we'll do it again. All right. I'm going to ask you a question. All right. If the Republicans you happen not to make this, you're going to give it a third party? Well, we're going to try this Republican route because I believe we can win that. We got in that race, but they won't do to us again what they did to our folks the last time. In 1964, I was chairman of the Goldwater Water for President Committee to win that county. Right. We swept it like nobody with a clean broom. Right. So you can do it to get the right people in there managing your, your, your whole campaign in the various counties. Right. You need somebody in every county to set it up and get workers out under them. Well, which we're going to try to do. Uh, right. We're working very hard at that. We're over in South Carolina this morning and uh, and last night. We spent three days there and we're over here. And we got to do well in those early primaries. If we break through, I think we can run to daylight and we can win Georgia. I am the general superintendent of the Bible Landmark Church of God. We're right. scattered from Minnesota all the way back into Georgia. Right. We're all going to work hard. Uh -huh. we're, we're peculiar people, I guess. We have political radish from the pulpit in our churches. Right. I tell them what I think about what's going on, and I've told them many times what I think about you. Uh -huh. We will continue that. But now, think about if the Republicans do to you what they did last time, we need to... New party. New party. Here we do. This is well, a lot of people are saying that. A lot of people tell me that. Uh, how are you doing? Good, good. I put out flyers everywhere for you. Months and months and months work for you. Well, you are put very good. Put up road signs on the road. Well, thank you very me much. Me and my son. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay? We're going to do it again. Okay. We're going to give it everything we got to, all right? Look, we're going to make it this time. Okay. Thanks very much. Hey, We're going to make it this time. Okay, my friend. Sure. You take it easy. Thanks for coming out. Thank my you. My name too. and address is on there. How okay. can I get in touch with you personally? Anyway, uh, I'm up and I get they can get in touch with my my campaign up McLean. They've got my home address. You can write me right up there. Okay. In Virginia. Yeah, right up in McLean, okay. Virginia. Okay. I'll talk to them quite quickly. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Good enough. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cobb County. Good to see you, Shirley. Good seeing you. Glad you. We had a great rally down in Cobb County oh, yeah, in 92. It was a 96. It was a great rally. How is Republican from Georgia Tech? Scott. Hi, right, good to see you. Good to see you. Where's your son? Did that autograph? Sure, sure. Some lady like the picture here? Who is that, Chris? Okay. I got you. I got you. What do we need to do to get things Well, you're going to do that? Well, let me see if, uh, is Tom here? Or Tom, uh, who's it? How do you want to make it out, my friend? Scott. Scott, okay. Appreciate it. Sure enough. Where are those folks selling those, uh, parking? Number, number, Okay. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Uh, good luck to you, in the you take it easy. Thanks very much. Yes, you sir. mind us holding up the Declaration of Independence? Got the Declaration of Independence, Peace. right. Good enough. Okay. That's a good idea that fella had. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Donna Brown, it rhymes up in Washington. He enjoyed it for you. Well, that, yes, yes. I met your husband, yeah, right, didn't I? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think Warner wants to get a picture. This is their other baby. This is Ryan's nephew right here. Hey. <laughs> I get a picture of that. Okay. Real he How you doing? He had his vote. You got his vote? Okay. 
Mark, All right. Okay, come on. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Okay, I see it. You putting it up with this? How long you got to put up with this, right? Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. How are you doing? Uh, how for how Ford you doing? Penny. Ford you, Penny. You wrote me in basic training, Pat, and I appreciate it. I well, appreciate, I appreciate everything you you've said, said and sticking up for the troops. It means the world to well, me. Well, thank, thank you. And uh, we'll do whatever we can down well, at Fort Benning. Well, good for you. You what are you? 82nd or what? No, I'm I'm down at Fort Benning Infantry. Right. Regular ranks, out of right. college, joined the army for two well, years. Good for you. <laughs> good for you. All right. What do you? How do I make it out now? Just Jamie. Just J A M I E. Roger. Okay. J A M I E. Okay. How long are you in for? I have four more months, but. Four more months. Yes, I do. You haven't got any, they haven't carved any new orders for you, have they? Yeah? Unless they put that stop loss on me. I, you I get think. the eastern sector of Kosovo. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks, Pat. Good Take luck it easy. Hey, Take Pat, it easy. Do you think those Russians didn't have orders to go in like they did the other day over there? Sure they had orders. Hey, I remember Berlin. Exactly. That's exactly what they're doing. They're going in divided exactly up into right. sectors, right. and right. they're going to get the one sector, and the, Ser and the Serbs told them, come on through. Right. That thing was orchestrated. Sure. I mean, the guy said that a mistake was made. You come on. Press that? Did press say it was a mistake? You think Bill, you think Bill would believe that? Bill might. Now, Bill might. <laughs> Good to meet you, Pat. Good to meet you. I, I, I've followed you for years, and I've, I've been for you for many years. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I really like the way you handled Geraldo's questions about a month ago. Yeah. I, was, I jumped up and clapped, and he didn't corner you. I was real proud. <laughs> it was a good fight. Yeah. I think he wants a rematch. <laughs> okay. Pat, good you're to see. a patriotic American. And well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for signing the Declaration of Independence. Okay. And uh, please take that one with you. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, I appreciate it. Yes, okay. Patrick, this young man. Pat Buchanan in Ella J, Georgia last month. This is his third presidential campaign. Hey, Tom, where's Tom? Hey, Tom? Road to the White House is part of C-SPAN's comprehensive coverage of Campaign 2000. You can get more information by logging on to our website at www.cspan.org.